Enforcement agency, your war on drugs. What a mess. The DEA arrested a US student and left him in jail for four days. Daniel Chong was arrested at a 420 party uh, with a bunch of people who were smoking weed, and he was taken down to the prison and put in a cell with no window and left there for four days with no food or water. He had to survive by drinking his own pee. And then he found a bag of crystal meth in there, which he snorted and his hallucinations told him to scrape through the walls that he would find water. And then eventually they found him in there and let him out. And um, after a short stay in hospital, well, now he's suing them for something like $20 million. Okay, somebody wasn't doing their job right. And first of all, why? The, guy, the kid wasn't even actually charged. He, he was, he was uh, taken in there, like arrested, but then not charged. He, he was asked to sign some papers, told he could go. Okay, so why why was he put in a cell after that in handcuffs? And then how could they forget somebody in there for four days? I mean, that's really scary. You get arrested at a, a 420 party and then you almost die a horrible death by yourself in a cell. And three, what was methamphetamine doing in the cell? I mean, either he had it on him when he came in and they didn't check him properly, or it was already in the cell when he got there. Either way, somebody screwed up. But the cops are always working on improving their skills so that they can do their job better. And um, now they're they're doing these courses called uh, Drug Recognition Expert. And so, well, what better way to become a drug recognition expert than to observe people when they're on drugs? And and so that's why the uh, the Minnesota Police Departments have come up with this very ingenious way to train their cops. Uh, they go down to PV Plaza at Occupy Minnesota and they pick up some kids and then they get them high and then observe their behavior. How can they not know what people act like when they're high? It's really easy to identify somebody when they've been smoking weed because they walk like this. <laughs> And well, this video has gotten like 76,000 views and people are really outraged at this, that the cops are giving people pot. Don't you think that's a, a good thing? I mean, in an ideal world, the cops would hand out free pot every day. All cops would hand out free weed every day to anyone who wants it. You know, if people don't like the cops giving the kids pot to smoke, then maybe they should change the program and they should just give the pot to other cops to smoke and then observe each other. I think it would be really good if all cops had to smoke weed as part of their training. Anyway, a lot of people want to learn how to recognize, you know, drug addicts and, and you know, drug addled behavior and, and drug seeking behavior as well. Uh, the U.S. Department of Justice has this that they put out, don't be scammed by a drug abuser. Because you see there's this big war on drugs, right? So, you know, you have to figure out who's on drugs and then you have to discriminate against them and you have to, you know, arrest them and leave them in cells for four days without food and water or maybe refuse the medical treatment. As in the case of Anna Brown, who was uh, kicked out of the ER, taken to a police cell, where she then died 15 minutes later on the floor from blood clots in her legs that had spread to her lungs. What happened was uh, the, the hospital staff thought that she was a drug seeker, and, and that's why they did that. But in fact, she wasn't a drug seeker. She had a history of mental illness, and uh, so they, they couldn't tell the difference. And so she died. Well, that's the problem with profiling people as being drug abusers. I mean, if you're going by a list like this, don't be scammed by a drug abuser. You could profile somebody who's never even done drugs in their life. I mean, look at some of the criteria here. This is for when they go to the hospital. Unusual behavior in the waiting room. Assertive personality. Unusual appearance. Slovenliness or being overdressed. Being overdressed like what? Like Liberace? Reluctant or unwilling to provide reference information usually has no doctor and often no health insurance. That makes you a drug seeker. And this is why when you go to the hospital, if you're poor, you know, you better watch out because if you're not dressed right or if you're dirty or if you're, if you're a little weird, maybe you have mental illness, you know, be careful because they might just kick you out without even treating you. 
whether it's, you know, somebody being left in a cell for days or somebody being refused treatment at the hospital or, you know, the police spending their money on getting kids high. It's all because of this ridiculous war on drugs. And the moral of the story is if you have to go to an emergency room, make sure you've had a shower and try to act normal or you might get profiled. And if you want free drugs, well, go down to Occupy Minnesota at PV Plaza. So please leave me your comments on what you think of all this. Don't you think it's insane? I know I do. Well, thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.